Hello. Uh, even though this is a class mostly dedicated to Western art history, um, we will uh, address other traditions. We have addressed very fast, and I'm very sorry because that's my specialty, the Chinese tradition um, yesterday. And now we want to address Mesoamerica, the Native American traditions, okay? There were civilizations that had sprung up and had uh, fallen apart way before the first Europeans arrived in, in these shores, in the Caribbean, the island of Hispaniola, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and then later spread to Mexico and to Peru and all of our continents. Um, anyway, the Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica is a term used to denote kind of Central America, what is Central America in ancient times. And the cultures that we're going to talk about from this area, not from all of the Americas, just from Mesoamerica, are cultures that have several things in common. Like the Egyptians, they have hieroglyph writing. They write with pictures, and the early Chinese script also. There are pictures, small pictures, that convey ideas, okay? So there's hieroglyph writing. These cultures of Mesoamerica, what is now Central America, you know, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, you know, these countries also have stella. Stella are like, you know, like flat uh, tombstones, really, also with information. You have them all over the world, too. These people had books. These people had codices, right? Books of pictures, you know, that they would study and in which they would note mostly calendrical notations. They would write about time. They would write dates. Because that's the other thing, the, perhaps the most important thing that unites, you know, the, the people, the culture, and the art of Mesoamerica, the calendar. There's an obsession with time. So we have incredible calendars. These are the children of the corn, the main form of sustenance, the primordial vegetable, as it were, in Mesoamerica is corn. And everything has to do with corn and the young god of corn. And there's corn in all the drawings. So, and even the aesthetic, when you think about it, the square of some areas is really comes from the, from the shape of the kernel of corn. Uh, these people also have uh, had sweat lodges, you know. Temascal, sweat lodges, they would get together, like the Russians do, to sweat their impurities, okay? And they invented the ball game. Some of them, the early, the early civilizations, they're called the people from the land of rubber. Those are the Olmec, and they came up with the ball, and they would play ball game. Some people say that football, you know, uh, Latin American football, is, um, comes from some some format, some variant of their game. Additionally, um, they have this thing called the maypole, where they tie themselves from their feet, and then they, they, they spin around this pole. And ultimately, and perhaps uh, very fascinating for me, because I'm a big fan of comic book and manga, they have in their books, in their stella, in their, in their, in their murals, they have word balloons, like the comic books. They can show when people are talking. So these are, you know, these are the people of Mesoamerica. There are several civilizations we're going to talk about and whose art we want to look at. There are the Olmec, there are the Maya, and then there is the Aztec uh, at the end. Each one of these occupies a certain, um, a certain era in the history of Mesoamerica. And these are old, old eras. The first one is called the Pre-Classic. And when we talk about the Pre-Classic, we're talking from 2000 before Christ to maybe the year of Christ, something like that. That's the Pre-Classic. And this is when the Milpa, or the settlement, right? When people start farming and they settle with their milpa, you know, with corn and other vegetables, and they, they start developing things like art, like sculptures, uh, the, 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 the foundational, the mother culture, the ancestor of all of Mesoamerican civilization is called the Olmec. 
the Olmec are the people from the land of rubber, and they come from the U in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, when you see the Gulf of Mexico, there's a place there called Tabasco. I don't know if you've ever had Tabasco sauce. It's very hot, very spicy. So that's kind of the area, you know, Veracruz, Tabasco, where the Olmec are from. And they have incredible architecture, and the architecture is always aligned eight degrees um, west of true north. So when you know that, you realize, oh my God, they knew what true north was. They're always doing it, you know, eight degrees west of true north with their architecture. They have raised mounds, so they are starting to create pyramids, you know, pyramids with a flat top. These are the pyramids of our America. And of course, we always hear about the Egyptian pyramids, but we don't hear so often about the uh, Mesoamerican pyramids. And also, you know, they, um, they have incredible symmetrical, everything is symmetrical. It's very carefully done, the faces, the mounds, you have something here, you have something there. After the Olmec and then coexisting with the Olmec, but pushing forward um, beyond the Olmec, are the cultures of the classic era. So we go from 2000 to zero is the pre-classic. From zero to um, 900, let's say from zero to 1000, is the classic period. And that's a word from Greco-Roman antiquity. That's a word from the Mediterranean, from the Greeks. But because the Spanish, who are sort of the cultural descendants of the Greeks and the Romans, conquered, invaded, uh, took over the Americas, we are applying a category from a totally different culture and civilization, the category of classic, to the Mesoamericans when they arrived at their most glorious 900, 900 years of splendor. And at this time, you have a great city in the Valley of Mexico, very close to Mexico City today, the fabled city of Teotihuacan. Now, Teotihuacan was already empty, abandoned, a shell when the Spaniards arrived. It had been empty for a long time. We don't know what happened to Teotihuacan. And then you also have in the lush forest lands of Guatemala, of um, uh, where Subcomandante Marcos was um, in Mexico, in part of the areas of Mexico that, uh, that abut Guatemala, we have the Maya, the smaller Maya city-states or Maya kingdoms. There are several of them that I know of, Tikal in, uh, in Guatemala, Copan in Honduras, that being the southernmost, Palenque in Mexico. And these small city-states had incredible sophistication of visual art. They had books, they had uh, pots that were decorated, they had incredible architecture, so and like Teotihuacan. So all these things, I'm going to show you some Teotihuacan art, and this is some Maya art, okay? And take a look at this, take a look at this remarkable, remarkable artistry of the Mesoamerican era. Now, after that, we go from 2000 to zero before Christ, right? Pre-classic, the Olmec. The Maya also start in the pre-classic. Then we go from zero, the year of Christ, until 1000, the classic era. And the classic collapsed, the classic era in the Maya cities collapsed, we think because there was an environmental problem. Too many people uh, consuming the water, too many people farming, too many people wanted to be rich and have the luxuries till eventually they couldn't sustain themselves and the civilization collapsed. It's kind of a lesson for us today because if it happened to them, it can happen to us. And uh, so after that collapse, we start around 900, 1000 with a new era in Mesoamerican civilization and that one is called the post-classic. And the post-classic will last from 1000 all the way until contact when the European invaders arrived and destroyed the native civilizations of the Americas. In that last part, that contact part, you have, among others, the great Aztec culture. 
The Aztec culture is the culture we know the most about because it was the culture that greeted the Europeans. And as the Europeans were destroying Aztec culture, they were recording what they found out about the culture they were intent on destroying. And so that Aztec culture is the repository, is the one that keeps, it's the one that remembers and maintains Olmec as well as Teotihuacan sources. The Mayas, for their part, also greeted the Spaniards, and the Mayas were in what is now the Yucatan Peninsula, which has a little bit of Mexico and a little bit of Guatemala, maybe some Belize is in there, and that's how you know we we know um, we know about them because also the Europeans took over the Maya lands. So we know most about Maya, and we know most about the Aztec because these were the people that greeted the Europeans. And you know, in these cultures, in these Mesoamerican cultures, the, um, the gods, their religion is also super important. Um, and the gods sacrificed to give us life. And because they sacrificed to give us life, we must shed blood, we must cut ourselves, we must sacrifice and give blood to the gods. So there's a, a lot of blood sacrifice, whether it's personal or whether it had in companies the loss of life. Um, it is all part of the of the religion of the time. And uh, and here you're going to see several um, temples, several pyramids, several codices or books uh, from the Maya. Um, and uh, you know, when you look at them, think about you know, think about how does this compare to the Western art that we've been looking at. In some of the Maya Olmec Maya figurines, I can see some of the Amorgos figures from the Cycladis Islands, from the Cycladic Islands. You know, um, in other in other art, it is just so different. It is just so powerful. And yes, it's carving. Yes, it resembles sculpture. But, but the inspiration, the energy is in infinitely more different. And of course, the Maya did not have the arch that came with the Romans. So it's interesting to see how Maya aesthetic is a lot more square, a lot more box-like, a lot more um, linear in that regard. Uh, consider this as we keep studying Western art history. Thank you.